Perovskite oxides are one of the most versatile classes of materials. Sharing a common ABO3 structure, perovskites can display a huge range of different properties. The wide range of properties that we see in perovskite materials stem at least partially from the fact that the A and B site in their ABO3 structure can accommodate nearly every element of the periodic table. Perovskites have a cation on the A site and a different cation, commonly a transition metal, on the B site, which is octahedrally coordinated by anions, usually oxygen. Most perovskites don't have this cubic structure in their ground states, however, including the mineral perovskite, because most perovskites undergo so-called octahedral rotation distortions in which the BO6 octahedra rotate about one or more of the crystallographic axes. There are 23 different rotation patterns, or tilt patterns, which lead to 15 unique space groups. This pie chart shows the distribution of rotation patterns among known perovskites as of 2001. The largest slice, which takes up just over half the pie, is the PNMA structure. Most perovskites have the PNMA structure as their ground state or lowest energy structure. It would be useful if we had some rough indicator of whether we could expect a particular perovskite to adopt a structure with octahedral rotations. The tolerance factor is an empirical measure that relates the chemical composition of a perovskite to its stability. Here, RAO and RBO are the ideal AO and BO bond lengths for the given material, which we can calculate using the bond valence model. When T equals 1, the A and B site cations are ideally coordinated, and the cubic structure is predicted to be stable. When T is greater than 1, the B site is not optimally coordinated, and a polar or ferroelectric distortion is predicted to occur. This is what happens in prototypical ferroelectrics like barium titanate and lead titanate. When T is less than 1, this indicates that the A site is underbonded. The bonds to the A site are too long. In this case, the material is predicted to undergo octahedral rotation distortions, which shorten the length of the AO bonds. In fact, we can say rotations are driven by the A site, wanting to optimize its coordination environment. Although the tolerance factor is only a rough guide, it is reasonably accurate in the sense that most perovskites with T less than 1 exhibit structures with octahedral rotations. Now, most perovskites with octahedral rotations are not ferroelectric or polar, and prototypical ferroelectrics like barium titanate and lead titanate don't have octahedral rotations. And so we assume that octahedral rotations and ferroelectricity compete with and suppress each other in ABO3 perovskites. However, is this in fact the case? We became interested in exploring the interaction between ferroelectricity and octahedral rotations in perovskites. The first thing we did was to assemble a comprehensive suite of ABO3 materials. We wanted to explore the interaction between the distortions on a wide range of materials. This graph shows the ferroelectric mode frequency for a given perovskite as a function of the material's tolerance factor. The results were calculated using density functional theory and density functional perturbation theory. Now, a ferroelectric distortion will lower the energy of materials for which the frequency squared is negative. If the frequency squared is positive, however, the material will be stable to ferroelectric distortions. Here we've plotted the values for the set of ABO3 materials in the distorted PNMA space group. This is the structure in which most of these materials naturally occur. We see no trend as a function of the tolerance factor. This is what we would expect if rotation suppressed ferroelectricity. We then calculated the ferroelectric mode frequencies for the same materials 
but in the undistorted cubic structure. Now we see that as the tolerance factor decreases, the frequency of the ferroelectric mode also decreases. This plot tells us that the materials with the greatest tendency towards octahedral rotations, that is, materials with tolerance factors less than one, also have the largest ferroelectric instabilities. This seems contradictory to the idea that rotations suppress ferroelectricity. In addition, prototypical ferroelectrics, like barium titanate, tend to have tolerance factors greater than one. However, implicit in these interpretations of the data is the assumption that ferroelectric distortions are driven only by the B-site, not the A-site cation. Although A-site-driven ferroelectricity is nothing new, what our research has shown is that the A-site cation plays a much greater role in the ferroelectric mechanisms of many more ABO3 materials than previously thought. Understanding this, together with the role of the A-site cation in stabilising the PNMA structure, helped us answer the question of why there are so few perovskite ferroelectrics.